So let's have a look at, uh, at investments and let's review what we know uh, about that very briefly. So the traditional uh, analysis of investments in finance is that of discounted cash flow. So what that means is if you've just seen it in the, in the past weeks, what you want to do is you want to compute the net cash flow. Uh, it's called CF for cash flow in each future period of time T. Uh, so run from T equals one until perhaps until infinity. If this is a very long lived uh, project, until 10 years, whatever you wish. We have to think about what's the optimal or the, the, the right discount rate for this project. So it might involve uh, the walk, the weighted average cost of capital. So it might depend on risk actually, and we'll call that R here. Uh, and then the value of the project, of course, the, the present value is the sum of all those, those discounted uh, cash flows. So the first uh, cash flow will be discounted by 1 plus r to the power 1, and the, the uh, cash flow which occurs in year 2 might uh, and then be discounted then by 1 plus r to the power 2, etc., uh, uh, as, as far as you would like to, to go. Uh, so if this is an, indeed an infinitely lift uh, project, then uh, we might have uh, an infinite number of cash flows, each discounted more and more. So as long as R is a positive number, uh, these, these cash flows which occur very far into the future get a very low weight, obviously, because they're discounted by a very high power of 1 over 1 plus R. Okay, so that's the, uh, the value that, uh, that this project might have. And we have to compare this value, of course, with the investment costs, and that gets us the net present value, the NPV. So the NPV is basically just this, this discounted value, the present value, minus the current today's investment costs, I. And then the traditional rule is, you know, as long as this is positive, NPV is a positive number, we'll make this investment. That's a good investment. And if it's negative, it will not do this. So let's look at uh, the, uh, the trivial example almost, that where there are constant prices, um, uh, no costs, so marginal costs are zero, the prices are at level P all the time, and we're going to just have, one, have a machine, basically a factory, which can produce one unit of the good and sell this at price P in each of these periods for all, for eternity, if you wish. So uh, uh, from T equals zero until you know, each year uh, until uh, T equals as high as you like. Well, this is basically when we get cash flows P each year, and then we know that this is actually in finance uh, called a perpetuity. So that's uh, uh, actually uh, an, an interest rate um, instrument, actually, if you, uh, if you followed uh, any uh, corporate finance uh, or asset pricing, uh, asset pricing uh, courses in the past. So that's what this is, essentially. So this uh, the value of this, uh, of this perpetuity is, of course, well, P that we get from selling this first this one good in period one discounted by one plus r to the power one plus again a cash flow of P in year two again discounted etc. And these dots go mean going on until infinity and of course we can write this as a sum so this big sigma of course is a symbol for the sum for t equals one the first year until you know, all years actually up to infinity and we have to add up all those uh, the present value of values of each of these uh, discounted cash flows and if you uh, have paid attention in your asset pricing classes uh, you will know that this is p over r and if you uh, if this is the first time you see this you have to use it basically uh, to add up all these terms you'll use what's called a geometric uh, series uh, result so this uh, the value this total value of this thing is p over r and that's actually not uh, not surprising because you know if you would have a value v which would invest today in the perpetuity it would give you, give you the interest rate on that investment which will be r v r times v each year for now until eternity so um, uh, this just says that the, the cash flow that you get p would equal to r times v and that's precisely what this equation says so it makes economic or financial sense as well apart from mathematical sense Okay, so uh, the value of this uh, of this investment, uh, the present value, depends on this price, the current current today's price, p over uh, price is p. So the value is p divided by this this interest rate r. So p divided by r, where again this r might be the the weight average cost of capital for this uh, particular project. And what will you do? Well, traditionally you will invest if this net present value is positive. So when p over r minus i 
minus the investment cost is bigger or equal to zero and will not invest if it's lower than zero obviously because then you will be destroying value so the interpretation is obviously again uh, yeah, it should be clear here yeah, this project is worthwhile doing as long as this price is bigger than the r times i and that makes sense because r times i is exactly the per period capital costs of making this investment so the alternative would be putting this i in the bank which would gives you would, which would give you r times i each year uh, and as long as this p is large and then that r times i you will be better off making the investment and if not you would better uh, be better off not doing that so the result here is the rule and the investment rule basically the optimal investment rule is you should invest as long as p is bigger than some threshold price namely p the threshold price let's call it p star and it should would equal r times i and if it's smaller than that do not make the investment so we can draw this actually as a graph so here you see this value the npv the net present value of this project is a function of price so again as long as p is smaller then r times i we will not make the investment so then the npv of the ability to do this project is zero because you are not going to do it you're not going to do anything so the value of that is going to be zero well if you do make the investment which is, which happened on the right hand side so if p happens to be bigger than r times i you would be better off making this investment and then you get this npv p over r p minus i so that's of course linear that the larger p is the larger that npv is and that's this, this sloping point here this sloping line here so um of course uh, if you look at this graph it's straightforward but you might recognize something if you have ever seen a call option you know, this actually looks a lot like the payoff of a traditional call option so a call option as you know is a derivative of some price for a stock for instance if it's a call option on a stock and you know, it says you can actually buy this particular stock at some predefined uh, strike price um, and you will do this as long as this stock is worth more at the maturity date uh, than the strike price and you will not do this and so get nothing essentially if uh, if this stock price is worth less than that and that actually gives the exact similar figure as uh, with, with this v kind of type v-shaped uh, or hockey stick kind of figure as you can see here so conceptually you can think of this project that we're looking at as an option or as a derivative if, if you wish a derivative of some underlying variable and this underlying variable here is this price the p which is moving up and down just like the stock price might be moving up and down in this financial analogon so the project here is you can see this as a derivative a financial a real financial derivative of price So we assumed that we should make this investment now or should not ever make this. And you might ask the question, well, is that actually the best we can do? Might it make sense actually in this model to wait? Why not? Well, of course, we can make the investment today, but we can also make the investment next year. We still have this opportunity to, make the, to wait a bit and to make the investment in a later period. So, of course, if you think a little bit, that's actually in this model never going to be optimal. Because if today the price is smaller than Ri, we would of course not make the investment today, but since prices are constant here, looking at the constant price model, P is just fixed, well then it won't be profitable next year either, or the year after that will never be profitable. So you make it, if you don't make it today, you will make it never. On the other hand, if today uh, this price is higher than this threshold level R times I, then you can make this investment today. You can also wait a year and get uh, the investment uh, next year. But what does that gain you? What does that, does that give you? Well, you get the MPV, but you get the MPV V minus I. You get that a year later. So there's basically a loss in the sense of the present value of this MPV, which means discounting by this uh, one plus R to the power of the number of years that you wait. That drives down basically this whole expression over here as long as interest rates are positive so in, in that case if you wait you are basically losing present value because of this discounting so if prices are constant you indeed make this decision now or never 
So obviously we are, this is you know, satisfying, but uh, not enough, I guess. Uh, so we want to add something to this model. And the things that we are going to add, of course, are uncertainty. So price is not constant. Price or costs or whatever you wish, they will change over time. And that might actually change some of the, uh, some of the conclusions that we have just uh, drawn. We are also going to add uh, sort of more interesting decisions, just uh, apart from making the investment today or making the investment not, not making the investment today, and that's about timing the investment. We are going to ask when is this investment optimal, and that's going to be a more interesting question when prices are moving over time than when prices are constant. And some other decisions might come into play. So. Which technology do we choose? You know, if we can choose between two different kinds of plants, you know, which one are we going to, to choose if we only have uh, room for basically one of these investments? Uh, or do we at some point want to uh, expand our, if that's possible, expand this, uh, this factory? So you make a small one today and expand it into, into a bigger plant uh, tomorrow. And then will that make sense? So those decisions will also be uh, uh, some that we would like to have a look at. And so far in this you know, uh, toy model, essentially, we have been looking at the discrete time, so just individual years, if you wish, if you can count. And we're going to uh, elaborate uh, to get to continuous time, so time that flows uh, as, you know, I think, real time, and usually is, is, is taken to flow in a continuous uh, fashion. Uh, so, you know, on one hand, that's uh, perhaps more realistic uh, in some dimensions, at least. But mostly, you know, uh, also, uh, this turns out to make our calculations actually a lot easier when models get more complicated. So that will be the additions that we'll make. So let's go there in the next video.